Surely you've heard of a 5-step plan before. You've probably also heard of a 12-step plan to deal with alcoholism or other drug-related treatments. But have you ever heard of a 39-step plan? No? Well, neither have I, because that sounds absolutely dreadful. Who would want to take that many steps just to try and deal with just about anything? So don't take the 39-step plan. Take this shortcut. But wait, how does that pertain to this game? You'll find out shortly. Actually, it'll take quite a while, but you'll find out. Hi, you folks, Fruit and Doggy here, jumping back in the 39 steps. And, oh, yeah, I said I'm not going to read those too much, so just going right into it. Third class citizen. And he's just about to head out because he's trying to slink away from his own apartment with somewhat, basically, his tail between his legs. So, uh, cheerio. I have to admit, that is pretty early in the morning by our standards, huh? That can clattering fool! Late! Late today of all days! How dare he! Inconsiderate. Am I waiting for something? Okay, yes. He was a young man about my own height, with an ill-nourished mustache, and wearing a flat blue cap and white overalls. Not a white cap and blue overalls. I guess white on white. Milk's not gonna stain white overalls. I reckon you're a bit of a sportsman, and I want you to do me a service. Lend me your cap and overall for ten minutes, and here's a sovereign for you. His eyes opened at the sight of the gold, and he grinned broadly. Who's the guy? A bet. I'm time to explain, but to win it, I've got to be a milkman for the next ten minutes, and all you've got to do is to stay here till I come back. You'll be a bit late, but nobody will complain, and you'll have that quid for yourself. Right. I ain't the man to spoil a bit of sport. Here's a rig, Gaffer. Is he about to do a bait and switch and frame him for the murder? Wearing his hat and overalls, I went whistling downstairs. Hey, it was the light work, right? You know, is he really sure that nobody's gonna complain if he's late? I thought, at first, I thought there was nobody in the street. Then I caught sight of a policeman a hundred year yards down and a loafer shuffling past on the other side. I crossed the street in character, whistling gaily and imitating the jaunty swing of the milkman. Some impulse made me raise my eyes to the house opposite, and there at a first floor window was a face. As the lover passed, he looked up, and I fancied a signal was, in was exchanged. Hello. Why did he go into all those little details? Then I took the first side street. There was no one in the alleyway. Sight dropped the milk cans inside the hoarding and sent the cap and overall after, after them. I had only just put on my cloth cap when a postman came round the corner. I gave him good morning. He answered me unsuspiciously. Yes, my sleuthiness, my stealth. Passing without any issues thus far. Having built up a good facade, a good charade, that I was just a common man. I broke it entirely by running, taking off at a hard sprint. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Really should run more, I am so out of shape. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh man, this guy must be in pretty decent shape. He's putting a good run on. <laughs> Hear that music? Ooh. Things are getting tense now because I'm running from nothing. There's nobody after me, but I'm going to keep running. Ooh, ooh. 
I had no time to take a ticket. A porter told me the platform. I saw the train already in motion. Two station officials blocked the way. So to draw less attention to myself, I'm going to jump on the train without pain. Oh, I guess I gotta click, because uh, turning the mouse wasn't doing anything. I dodged him and clambered into the last carriage. Don't try this at home, kids! I had made it! I mean, brilliant? Good job! Three minutes later, an irate guard interviewed me. He wrote out for me a ticket to Newton Stewart, a name which had suddenly come back to my memory. Then he conducted me from the first class compartment to a third class smoker. Wow, really insulting smokers there, considering you are one yourself, huh? Jeez, that is pretty grimy, huh? The compartment was occupied by a sailor and a stout woman with a child. Oh, did I just click? Man, that seat is a glowing fierce. Ah, uh, it's a sale job catching trains. Aye, <clears throat> the impotence of that geared. Geared. He scotch tongue to put him in his place. He was complaining of this way and no hearing a ticket and her no fever till August 12 month. And he was objecting to this gentleman spitting. He objected to spitting the scumbag. But, uh, really, my character now is putting on this real hackneyed accent. Obesity can be reduced without drugs or starvation. And people say this is a modern day problem. Empire Day celebrations, yesterday's parade in Hyde Park. The annual Empire Day Parade in Hyde Park took place yesterday afternoon. Rain prevented the attendance of Lord Roberts, who had promised to take the salute, but in his place the Earl of Meath, or Meath, received the salute from her 6,000 men and boys. Lord Roberts can't even hold the most basic of promises. The parade, which was under the patronage of Prince Alexander of Tech and Princess Alexander of Tech. So, the Prince and Princess Alexander of Tech, I think that'd been the easier way to say it, was commanded by Lieutenant General Sir Henry H. Settle. Well, good for them, huh? And I'm done. I had a solemn time traveling north that day, as to the many days I've had solemn travel traveling south. Going on up to. Liverpool. I asked myself why, when I was still a free man, had I stayed on in London and not got the good of this heavenly country? Heavenly country? Well, I guess back in those days. Oh, Manchester, my mistake. Then I got out Scudder's little pocketbook and studied it. How oh, for Pete's sakes. Gotta create the glyphs for turning the pages. My gosh, man. Look at this. Look at this. Man, my heart was in my throat. I didn't know if I was going to make it through that. My gosh. I tried for hours. But none of the words answered. Speak to me, book! Darn you! Your impudence! I was certain Scudder never did anything without a reason. I was pretty sure there was a cipher in, you know, all of this. I've heard for thing. I have a head for things like chess and puzzles. And I used to reckon myself pretty good at finding out ciphers. These sets of figures looked like they corresponded to letters of the alphabet. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
If you don't count the Lunville, there's only seven different characters that are being used. How in the world is that going to correspond to... Oh, unless it's... L... Well... No, L is 50, and then LIX would be 49, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wait, no, uh... That'd be 59, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think. So, I don't know how that's supposed to work. Especially with M. M is a thousand. That's Roman numerals. It probably has a different form of logic being applied, though. Did I just hear buzz off? I woke up at Dumfries just in time to bundle out onto the crowded flat platform. Because I needed to take a Dumfries. <laughs> That's a dumb name. I just triggered a bunch of European viewers. There is a young man on the platform whose looks I didn't like. But he never glanced at me. I just didn't like the way he looked. All young and so on. I caught sight of myself in the mirror of an automatic machine. Automatic machine. With my brown face, my old tweeds, and my slouch, I was the very model of one of the hill farmers who are now crowding into the third class carriages. I looked like dirt poor trash. Just the way I wanted. I boarded the Galloway train, traveling with half a dozen in an atmosphere of shag and clay pipes. Sure do like their clay, don't they? They come from the weekly market, and their mouths were full of prices. Can you believe five cents for a loaf of bread? What is this coming to? Passengers. Above half the men had lunched heavily. Above. What? Above ha Oh, more than half the men had lunched heavily and were highly flavored with whiskey. Hmm, nothing like the taste of whiskey on a man. But they took no notice of me. That was a joke, people. I heard accounts of how the lambing had gone up the cairn and the douche. Douche? Not even going to try to pronounce that a second time. And a dozen other mysterious waters. Yes, those very mysterious douche waters. This could not have been done completely unintentionally, right? Not, not in this day and age. Even if it is, you know, an old work rewritten or made into a game, it's like they knew what they were doing. But anyways. About five o'clock, the carriage had emptied, and I was left alone as I had hoped. Yes, alone in a train. I got out at the next station, so I could be alone again. Wow, pretty money, huh? It reminded me of one of those forgotten little stations in the... Karoo! An old station master with his spade over his shoulder sauntered to the train sauntered to the train, took charge of a parcel, and went back to his potatoes. Potato master. While a child of ten received my ticket. Actually, it almost looked like while a child often received my ticket. Because the letters were so close. Path. Wait! Wait! I want to go backwards, not onwards! No! But, I mean, I don't know. I just found that kind of funny. Why bother making me go to the path and then... Oh, another image. Wait, where can I go? Onwards. Okay. How about onwards again? Oh, jeez. I was joking. I was joking, game. Onwards a third time. I was getting very hungry when I eventually came to a herd's cottage. A brown... Uh... What? A brown-faced woman greeted me with the kindly shyness of moorland places. When I asked for a night's lodging, she said I was welcome to the bed in the loft, and very soon she set before me a hearty meal of ham and eggs, scones, and thick sweet milk. But what about a good thick sweet scone? At the darkening, 
Her man came in from the hills, a lean giant, who in one step covered as much ground as three paces of ordinary mortals. They asked me no questions, for they had the perfect breeding of all dwellers in the wilds, but I could see they set me down as a kind of dealer. Hmm, what kind of dealer? I took some trouble to confirm their view. I tried to sell them drugs. No, not the poor innocent woodlands. They refused any payment, and by six the next morning, I had breakfasted and was striding southwards again. Man, you are a good dealer, dude. They didn't even, wouldn't even let you pay them. All the slackness of the past months was slipping from my bones, and I stepped out like a four-year-old. What imagery is that supposed to events? Provoke? Events? Events. That sounds wrong. Evoke? I'm mixing up my words. But seriously, what is that supposed to mean? I stepped out like a four-year-old. Unsteady and unable to walk, I guess? I mean, he's 37, but I was getting the idea I was trying to go for he felt spry. My notion was return to the railway line a station or two farther on than the place where I had alighted yesterday and to double back. Oh, this guy's sneaky. Nobody would think to look back for me back where I came from. Hmm. For who would do that but the fool! Uh. Oh. I waited. Yeah. I waited till I saw the smoke of an east going train on the horizon. Then. I approached. Coo 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 coo! I know that's supposed to be a train whistle, but it sounded sort of like a hunting cry. Then I approached the booking office and took a ticket for Dumfries. I've had to take a lot of Dumfries lately. Alrighty, folks, looks like that chapter's done. And I guess since this is the recreation of an entire novel, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> so I'll probably, this won't matter by the time I post it and so forth, but I'm probably gonna do this over hopefully a longer stretch of time. Because on the one hand, I'm kind of enjoying it, but it's also a little droll, a little slow. But, you know. Nothing wrong with the change of pace. But anyways, I hope you enjoy. I'll see you later. And as always, folks, fruit and doggy. And again, the music's like, boosh, and it's like, chill.